The next bill on the calendar for the day is House File 1370. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 1370, number four on the calendar for the day, an act relating to public safety, the second engrossment. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Anoka, Representative Stevenson, to explain House File 1370. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker and members of the House, I'm here today to urge that the legislature address the issue of deep fakes, in particular those that depict sexual content or are used to influence the outcome of an election. Deep fakes are synthetic media that use advanced artificial intelligence techniques to manipulate video or audio content. These technologies make it possible to create highly realistic yet completely false depictions of people doing and saying things that never actually happened. This has serious implications for privacy, free speech, and the integrity of our elections. One of the most concerning applications of deep fakes is the creation of non-consensual pornographic content, which is commonly referred to as revenge porn. This is a serious violation of privacy and can cause significant harm to the individuals portrayed in the content. In many cases, the victim is unaware that the content exists and may only discover it after it has been widely shared online. Another area of concern is the use of deep fakes in political propaganda and election interference. With the increasing sophistication of these technologies, it is becoming easier to create convincing fake news or propaganda that is designed to manipulate public opinion. This could potentially have significant impact on the outcome of elections, undermining the integrity of our democratic process. To address these challenges, I believe that it is necessary for legislation to be enacted to regulate the distribution of deep fakes. This issue is a serious and growing concern that demands immediate action. I urge this body to take steps to protect the privacy, free speech, and democratic rights of all citizens. Mr. Speaker, I, every word that I just said uh, from the beginning to now uh, was written for me uh, by the artificial intelligence service chat GPT as a result of a, a one-sentence prompt that my legislative assistant put into chat GPT. So this is an illustration to the body of how far artificial intelligence uh, is coming, uh, that my remarks today were entirely written and prepared for you uh, by artificial intelligence. This is an important bill. I'm glad we're going to have this discussion today. There's an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. New Brindley moves to amend House Law number 1370, the second engrossment. The amendment is coded A6. I recognize the author of the amendment, the member from Chisago, Representative New Brindley, to explain the A6 amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Excuse me. And first of all, thank you, Representative Stevenson, for the bill. Um, I think everyone in this chamber is on board and understands this in this changing world of technology, we are seeing some really crazy, really scary stuff. Um, and we want to make sure that we are getting out ahead of that. You know, I mean, we have been in situations, frankly, in relatively recent years where things that seem like they would very obviously be criminal behavior were not and uh, victims were not able uh, to, victims were not able to be taken care of based on existing law. And so, to be clear, I support this bill. Uh, I, think it is, I think it is really good and I think it's really important. I do have some concern when it comes to the election section, section two of the bill, talking about deep fake technology um, influence on an election. Um, and my concern lies not so much in the, in the video, audio, that's very clear. Um, and frankly, I, I, in my conversation with Representative Stevenson, I, I, I let him know that I had heard uh, earlier, j just earlier this week, I heard um, comments from both President Biden and President Trump. I assumed they were real, and neither of them were. They were both this deep fake kind of material. And so I even understand the purpose of that as it pertains to elections, and I think it's important, I think it's critical. However, I do have some concern when it comes to print material. And it is certainly not because I want to open the floodgates and you know be able to do what we whatever we want in print material. However, I think that there's a lot more gray area. And when it comes to electioneering, 
We've got some bright line. We, we often talk about bright lines, magic words. We've got bright lines when it comes to electioneering that make it very clear that you are on one side or the other of that line in electioneering. And my concern is that when it comes to print media specifically, um, and the language I use in uh, the amendment is an electronic image or photograph produced using photo editing software, um, that this is a much more gray area. When you look at the definition of, of deep fake, it specifically refers to something depicting speech or conduct. And so I think, there's, I think there's some gray area when it comes to an image. It is difficult to infer speech or conduct when it comes to an image. And I would, I would draw your attention, I know um, there, are some, there are some pictures being passed around on the house floor. Um, and frankly, I think a lot of us get a little giggle about a few of these, but I, I, I pass them around for a reason, because I think that um, I think that there are some things that are obviously egregious. You know, Representative Stevenson and I talked about a scenario where you might Photoshop an image to depict a candidate doing something illegal. Um, untoward, immoral, that clearly is, is not ethical, is, is um, frankly not legal to do. It would be a blatant lie to put something like that out. Um, there are also situations where there might be campaign literature that is clearly not real. You might find uh, in your packet of things that have been passed around an image of a former member uh, on horseback riding, riding a horse. This is clearly not real. I don't think this would qualify as a deep fake. This is clearly not real. Um, I don't think that that would qualify as a deep fake. So there are certain things that I think are very clearly out of bounds, and there are other things that I think are clearly within bounds. And if they are cartoonish, if they are um, depicting something that is clearly not a deep fake, um, those things would be within bounds. But I do think that there are lots of things that are on that blurred line that we may or may not know. You know, there's one of a former representative holding a videotape. I, I don't know if that would be a deep fake. It's, I don't think it's real. I don't think that, I don't believe that that is her body. Um, I did ask for permission, but there is a picture of, of a current member of our chamber shredding material. Well, I don't think I don't think that's his body. I guess he could verify. I don't think that's his body. But is that a deep fake? Is this, is this depicting speech or conduct that he didn't engage in? Well, I don't know. He's probably shredded some documents at some point. Um, I mean, we all do. Not, not in a nefarious way, just in the fact that we all do. <laughs> um, there, there's another one of a former member with his finger up to his mouth. I actually don't think that's his hand. I don't think that's his hand. But as I look at that, is, is that a deep fake? I, I don't know. There's another, oh, I'm so glad that another image has just been passed around that is clearly within bounds. And I sure hope everyone enjoys that one. Um, Fortunately, fortunately, this one will remain in bounds with the new deepfake language. Thank you for that, Representative Stevenson. Um, yes, well, that's true. The, the lit piece is also accurate and true, so um, that makes it within bounds also. Um, there's, there's another image of a former member, which Mr. again, Speaker. 
I don't, Mr. I don't Speaker? think is accurate. I don't think Who's it seeking can. recognition? Uh, Representative Scott, for what purpose do you rise? Um, Mr. Speaker, it's really loud in here. I can barely hear Representative New Brindley. Thank you. Representative New Brindley. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, but th there's the, the last one. Again, I don't think that this is our former member's body or headband, but I could be wrong. Um, but does this depict any specific speech or conduct uh, that he would did not, in fact, engage in? Here's the thing. Like I said, I actually think this is a really good bill. I think it's a really important bill. And I think everyone in this chamber can see, can foresee situations, frankly, in the very near future, where this law is going to become incredibly important to protect Minnesotans. And I support that 100%. I just think that there's some gray area here that causes problems that we should consider, which is why I have offered the amendment to this bill to just say that when it comes to print, We've got to look at this a little bit differently, and I would ask for support on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair, or Mr. Speaker. Further discussion to the A6 amendment. I recognize the member from Minoka, Representative Stevenson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I'm going to ask members to, to vote no on the amendment. I, I do think uh, that uh, uh, Representative Brindley raises some important questions. Um, I think that the bill, from my perspective, does have a clear standard because what it says is it has to appear to authentically depict uh, someone engaging in speech or conduct that they did not, in fact, engage in. And I, I do think that that is a clear standard that can be um, uh, referenced. My concern with adopting the amendment is I do think that still images, uh, and, and perhaps not the ones that we've been seeing on the, on the floor uh, today, and, and yes, we did, you know, I think that's a some of the most interesting handouts we've had in some time. And it, is, it was important to me to send out the one to make clear that everyone understood that this one could still happen, that this one is, uh, don't worry, we could still do that. But, um, uh, but uh, we have seen just in the last week an example of a still image deepfake that uh, should give us pause because images have been circulating this week of a former uh, president of the United States uh, being arrested. On, these have been on Twitter and other places, and um, that did not happen. Those images are not real. Um, and some of those images uh, could easily be construed by a voter to be authentic. And if you imagine those not being circulated on Twitter, you know, two years before an election, but in a mailbox a week before an election, uh, you can imagine the harm that that could do without any opportunity for redress. This technology is getting really good, and I think it's important to include still images. I think it's important for us to not be deceiving voters. So I, I appreciate the discussion, and I appreciate Representative Brinley raising this issue, and I, I'm happy to continue talking about the issues that uh, Representative Brinley is raising, but I would ask today that members vote no. Further discussion to the amendment. I recognize the member from Anoka, Representative Niska. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Stevenson, for this bill. I agree with Representative New Brindley that this is a really good bill, and I, ex I express this to you in uh, Judiciary Committee. Uh, this is a an important bill. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost there, uh, but it's not quite there. And I do think that um, Representative New Brindley's amendment is an important uh, step in the right direction towards dealing with really important uh, core free speech issues that relate to the elections. Our rights as citizens to engage in core political speech um, right before an election is really, really important. And we as a state should never be trying to chill legitimate political speech, which sometimes can be catchy and provocative. And we as the state do not get to uh, say what is and what is not legitimate. Free citizens, candidates, political parties, need to be able to express themselves in connection uh, with the elections. And I think it's really important that as we're thinking about this and dealing with legitimate problems, um, whether we're talking about this or whether we're talking about campaign financing or other places, we need to be really careful that we're creating bright lines instead of fuzzy lines. There are really two concerns um, 
that I think are really important and, and we need to take very seriously when we're talking about whether the lines we're drawing between speech that's prohibited or, or election-related activity that's prohibited and not, um, we need to draw very bright lines. First of all, because we need to create certainty for the people uh, who are engaging in the speech. Sometimes those are just concerned people, out, free citizens in our, uh, in our democracy that need to be free to speak, um, but also political campaigns and political parties. They need to have clarity, and they have the right to have clarity about what's legal and what's illegal without having to go consult a lawyer, without having to go dig through uh, the statute books, or without having to just try it and then see what happens as a result. Um, but the second thing we need to be really concerned about is the ability of either litigation or criminal prosecution to be used as an election tool. Uh, having a either a candidate or maybe a friendly county attorney or some other political actor intervene into an election at the, at the end of it when we're talking about things that are in gray areas is not the way that our political system should work. It's not the way that our democracy should work. And so I do think it's really, really important that we think about drawing very, very clear and bright lines between what's legal and what's, not, and what's prohibited. And so I do think, while this bill is good, Representative Stevenson, and I think it's a really, really important issue that we're trying to deal with, uh, has a potential to really defraud um, and, and, uh, and mislead voters, we also need to be very careful about drawing the line between legitimate speech and non-legitimate uh, non speech. And I think that using the, the um, clarification language that Representative New Brindley is doing here is a step in the right direction. So I would hope that members would vote in support of the New Brindley Amendment. Thank you. Further discussion to the A6 Amendment, I recognize the author of the amendment, the member from Chisago, Representative New Brindley. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think that there are enough problems with the underlying language that the amendment just makes sense to clarify and I would ask for a yes vote. Seeing no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll on the A6 amendment. Uh, forget that. All those in favor of the A6 amendment, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. no. The motion does not prevail and the amendment is not adopted. There are no further amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. Third reading, House File number 1370. Third reading. Discussion to House File 1370. I recognize the member from Brown, Representative Torkelson. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to a point of order. Representative Torkelson, state your point of order. Well, therein lies the problem, Mr. Speaker. I've been scouring the rules, trying to figure out if there's a rule against reading a chat GPT speech on the Minnesota floor. <laughs> Perhaps you can help me, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Representative Torkelson, I believe you're asking for a point of parliamentary inquiry. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, in spite of being able to find uh, anything in the rules regarding this, I have to congratulate uh, Representative Stevenson on his best speech of the year. <laughs> Further discussion to House File 1730. I recognize the member from right, Representative Hudson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, and thank you, Representative Stevenson, for bringing this bill. Uh, it seems like every time I get up to address something you've said or done, I'm praising it. I, I hope to be able to continue that. Um, but in this case, specifically what I want to point out uh, is that this is an example of proactive legislation. And very often um, what we do, not just in this chamber, but in legislative chambers across the country, is uh, react to problems. Um, and we're at a point in our history where um, technological developments are increasing at a ever more rapid pace. Um, and this is the type of thinking that we have to be able to do and willing to do, to, to ask questions about, well, where is this going? What kind of problems is it going to create? Uh, and how do we get out ahead of it? Um, and that's what this bill does. 
Um, and so that's why I rise in support of it. And you know, just to speak to the concerns that have been raised um, by my colleagues over on this side, I get it, absolutely. There's, we wanna have bright lines and it can be difficult when you're dealing with um, an emergent technology uh, and, and having to um, discern where the intersections of different interests lie. Uh, but this is a step in the right direction and maybe it'll get a little sloppy in its implementation, that's okay. We'll figure it out. Um, maybe we'll be coming back with other legislation to make those lines brighter at some point. Um, but in the meantime, uh, I would ask members to vote yes. Any further discussion? I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Anoka, Representative Stevenson. Well, thanks, Mr. Speaker and members, and particularly Representative Torkelson for your kind, kind words. And uh, thank you for the discussion, and I ask for a yes vote. The clerk will take the roll on House File 1370. Would the clerk please call the name of the member who's voting remotely? Richardson. Richardson votes aye. Richardson votes aye. There being 127 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.